How's it going, everybody? Resident Loser Jeremy here. Just wanted to hop on a live. Um, I've been toying around with the idea of doing like a live mix with you guys, if that's something you want to do. If you've hopped on any of the lives before, you know normally I have a plan, but this derails quickly. So <laughs> let me know real quick, whoever's in the chat. Uh, I see there's a few people in. Uh, let me know if you can hear me, if you can hear Pro Tools. Here's Pro Tools real quick. And then obviously, here's me. So let me know. I'm going to wait to see if you guys can hear everything all right. Hey, love these. You rock. Thanks, dude. Hey, everybody. Somebody let me know in here if all the audio is cool. Thumbs up. I'll take that as we're good. So this, I just wanted to pull up something. I honestly haven't looked at this in a long, long time. Um, and for some of these lives, I'm pulling from the same couple of artists that that they're not... They're songs that I have permission for. They're never finished. So uh, they're good things that I can use for examples. Oh, wow. People in the chat already. Look at this. Maybe play and talk at the same time. Sure, here. So this particular song was recorded um, probably about four years ago. Uh, project was never finished. Um, this does have vocals. This artist, and let me know if you can hear me while this is playing. Artist was good songwriter. Wrote just writes a crazy amount of songs, but never wanted to be the main artist for this stuff. Um, and he would tell you, balance is great. Sweet. Awesome. We're figuring this thing out. Um, artist would tell you himself he would almost rather have someone else sing these songs. So let's not be... I don't want to get into a thing like uh, saying anything on the track is not up to par. He would probably agree with you there. So we're going to use this as an example because that's what I have to play with. Um, let me stop this real quick. Players on this thing were insane. Um, and so this, again, real quick, this was a songwriter who writes really good songs. He himself would probably agree with you. He's not the strongest singer. He wanted other people to sing on this record. Um, I've done a few projects like this with him. Just a cool guy making music for fun. Um, and I wanted to go back through this because it's been about four years since I took a look at this and I wanted to see if I could mix it live. Um, and it's almost like looking at someone else's stuff <laughs> because I don't remember doing this. It'll probably come back as we dig in, but this will be very much like me mixing a song from someone else because it's almost that foreign to me. I don't remember what's happening in this song. I had somebody check it just to make sure like, hey, does this sound like a song? Uh, and then pull off whatever's on there make sure it's on the template and we're good to go. So it's basically like starting on zero here. So I've got this on basically a routing template. Um, there's plugins on, these are all vocals right here. Um, and there's a couple tuning things open. So I think we're going to have to do some tuning. What's this? Let me pull this down. That's just some delay. Okay, so that's probably just a bunch of delays on a vocal track. And this is very typical. Like, I'm just going to get in here and get acquainted with it first. So I sectioned them out. There's a couple chorus ones, a couple bridge ones, verses. Okay, cool. And these melodines are probably totally empty. No, they're not. Sweet. So we can take a look at that. Wow, that's impressive. This thing sat for a while. All right, we got some people in here. And again, guys, if you have questions along the way, I'm gonna try to look at what's going on. We can't see the session that you're referencing. Oh, that's because I'm an idiot and I haven't changed the screen yet. Pop, there we go. Just when you think you're figuring live streams out. OBS is kind of new to me, it's kind of cool. So you should see the stream now. <laughs> So as your, let me give you the rundown of what's going on here in the session because I just wasted a minute of your time. And you can see here we've got basically just everything on a routing template. There's really nothing going on as far as plugins until we get to the vocals here. 
I then parted out with ad lib, a bunch of chorus vocals, some bridge vocals, verse, such. There's a couple instances of Melodyne already here. Uh, a couple that have the word commit in there, which tells me we probably tuned it during the session, which is cool. I hope we did a good job. Uh, then there's some delays, which those will probably go here pretty soon. Can see now all good. Dope. Thanks for letting me know, guys. <laughs> you got my back. I appreciate it. Um, other things special to note. You guys are listening through this listen track right here. Um, only thing I have on there is a trim plugin in case I decide to use any outboard gear, which I probably will. Uh, I have a limiter that's just shaving off the top because I don't know what YouTube does to something hitting it hard. So I'm pulling that back just a little bit. It's not doing any limiting though. Uh, and then on the actual master, I just have sonar works for me and you're not going to hear that because that's not going to you guys. Uh, other than that, here's my busing, and this is basically just a routing template. Only plug in here uh, is just a room that I'm using for like instrumental reverb, um, just to glue things together as I'm listening. So this is pretty much how I would start a mix. Any questions along the way? Shoot, but I'm gonna take a listen. We'll see what we got. Looks like I took good notes here. That's good. Kick out's cool. Yeah. I think that was when I was using one of the first sub kicks I built and it wasn't too great. So let's hear with the R44. Oh yeah. We'll use that. Okay. Not my greatest snare capture of all time. Wow, the hi-hat's almost louder than the snare in that. That'll be fun. Let's see what the bottom sounds like. That's cool. Okay, we can do stuff with that. Just a hat, who cares? Tom sounds good. Let's hear what these floors sound like. Okay. Then I had two sets of overheads. This is this is one of my favorite mics that I set up. Um, this is a room far, so check this out. That's awfully quiet. Hang on, we put a compressor on this real fast. This is my vestibule mic. This is awfully far from the kit. I'm just trying to goose it a lot because it's pretty far from the kit, but you can hear like watch when I put it back in. This is going to be too loud, but I can go from dry. Like it provides like a cool bloom. I love that mic. It's just a really, really cheap CAD PZM mic that's up on the wall and a very, very small tiled entryway. Do you track with any processing on the way in? Yeah, sometimes. Um, with, uh, yeah, I did, we definitely listen to plugins on tracks. Um, now with Pro Tools, it's not really committing anything. Um, so for that reason, I don't do it a ton, but yeah, we'll listen to, especially on the vocal, like I'll put a reverb or delay and we'll listen to it like that. Um, one big thing, I don't know if it's on here. Um, I don't know if it was part of the template back then. Yeah, guitar stereo. So I think if I solo a guitar. Uh, 
Uh, maybe not. Oh, it's going to a different guitar stereo. So there's just the difference in template there. But if I put it back in guitar stereo, should be this one, I believe. There you go. I'll definitely track with that on a lot just because it gives it like a big, like a big space for the guitar player during the tracking session. It helps people get like vibe, especially when you're tracking like a full band all at the same time. Uh, hey man, TE voice versus Pro Tools audio ratio. The voice versus Pro Tools is just a bit advantageous for your voice. Is that a good, are you saying that's a good thing? Do you want Pro Tools louder? Or are you saying like, Joe, what's up, dude? How's it going, man? Sadati Sound has entered the chat. If you guys don't subscribe to that dude, head over there. The voice. Yeah, I, I got the voice. Ratio is advantageous for your voice. Is that good? He means turn Pro Tools up a little. Well, that's, I mean, that's part of it, too. Like, I'm listening to just the drums and little pieces here. Uh, because we're about to mix the song. So um, I could see about maybe feeding it a little more, but let me know if it's going to start to clip a little bit because I definitely don't want to do that because we're about to start pushing volume pretty hard. So yeah, don't turn it up. Okay, yeah. I'm not going to mess with it too much. <laughs> All right, so let's get rid of that compressor that I just did for now. Let's start attacking some drums. I really know we need to start with this snare, and I like the sound of that snare, but this me tracking four years ago, I did not do a good job on this snare. So we are doing the snare trick. When you live track a band, how do you keep the bleed down from instruments in the room with the drummer? Um... The uh, keeping the bleed down because I I, ha I do have a small live room and on the studio tour you guys could see that that is about to change though news uh, it looks like we're gonna be changing a lot of the studio so keep keep subscribed and be looking out for those videos because I just today is kind of starting those discussions and making plans for possibly expanding the room quite a bit so. Uh, I'll definitely be filming, if that happens, I'll be filming all of that process, and I'm pretty excited about that prospect. So, um, But keeping bleed down in my room that was small, especially during a session like this, um, really the only thing, the amount of players that we have are uh, drummer, bass, guitar player, and keys for this particular session. Um, keys is MIDI. I used to have a piano. They just cost way too much to maintain. So we're doing uh, products do you use for the gorgeous beard? You know, right now there's uh, sugar-free syrup in this. So I highly recommend uh, dollar store brand sugar-free syrup. There you go. Um, well, as far as bleed go, uh, MIDI keyboards on there and having, I don't have to worry about bleed with that. I like to get everybody as close to the drummer as possible um, without, with, while still being comfortable, right? Um, so bass is, I always take a DI, and there's an amp. Um, bass amp is in a doghouse on the other side of the building. Um, so I don't really have to worry about bleed with cabs into, um, into the drums. Sorry, I keep looking up at the chat. <laughs> Trying to make sure I know where I'm at. Um and other things like uh, vocals, the vocalists during a session like this, there will be bleed. Um, even though they are in a separate room, they are in an ISO booth, which you can, I don't know if you can see it way back in there through that door. Um, but there always will be a little bit of bleed in that vocal mic. And for that reason, typically during a tracking session anyway, they're going to be recording scratch vocals and then they're going to come back to the studio later and do the final. Um, and that's for a few different reasons. Typically the song's going to change in the studio. Um, when you get like 
really, really good players in a room, the song just adapts. It's natural. Like the structure may change. Uh, parts may change a little bit. You may want to do a little bit of a different melody so we can capture that with the scratch track, but you don't have to worry about getting a perfect vocal take while you're also paying for six other people to be there. So we're not worried about bleed from that standpoint. Everything else, uh, cabs are in a different location in the room, so bleed's kind of a non-issue. Uh, and even if it were, there's ways to kind of treat bleed to your benefit because a live record, like records from the seventies where there was that like room vibe of all that stuff. That's cool. Vibe. Uh, one of the other engineers that works in here a lot, he just had a, a live recording where they recorded in a living room and he showed it to me and it had such a cool vibe because there was so much bleed. So bleed is not necessarily your enemy. If the players are good and the song is good, bleed is sometimes the magic of a record and we talk about glue I'm, I'm off on a rant here sorry this question really got me going but um we talk about glue and needing to compress things and glue them back together but if your players are good and the song is good and you're you can hear the room and all of this stuff bleed is kind of that glue it's bringing all those things together into the same atmosphere and the same vibe and the same space and that's a it's a vibe all its own. Yeah, bleed could be on everything. Absolutely. And that's genre specific. I mean, I don't know that I want that on like a prog metal record. Maybe I do. I don't know. Hey, let's try it. So let's see if I can remember how to do this snare trick here. I'm trying to do everything without a template. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> So right now I am going to phase flip and compress the snot out of the snare because I need to control what's going on here. Yeah, I'm trying to get out of the, the hi-hat. Here we go. There we go. And then I'm gonna pull back the EQ. So what I'm doing, I flip the phase on this snare so it'll totally cancel out. Uh, I'm now compressing it with a crazy ratio, very, very fast. Uh, I dialed the release into where I felt it was natural, otherwise you're just gonna get a click. So what's happening here, the snare is, on this track, it's gonna duck every time the snare is hit. So if I mute the original, it's just grabbing that snare as it's pulled down. But if I bring back in the original snare, it's going to not phase cancel when this compressor engages. So now I can take that a step further and say, don't even bother with the low end. Keep, let me keep the low end. So now I have something a little more manageable here. And I'm gonna pop those in a folder track. Routing folder. Why not? Snare trick. I always forget to click the little box that says route to new folder. Boom. And then this is going to go to listen. Cool. So now I can benefit of that uh, without using it. Like that would have been really, really hard. Holy cow, dude. Five bucks. Dude. Well, thank you. 
That's nuts. Okay, I, don't know, I should look up at the chat. I'm really sorry, guys. Uh, got the beard, nice and grass. Quick question about your filmmaking gear. Okay, did you ask later? Sadati asking the real questions. Absolutely. Sugar-free syrup. Congrats on your color grading. Uh, do you have any tips for keeping a mix energetic and keeping it clean while easy to listen to? Different for every mix, man. Um, I think it always starts with finding a focus, deciding what you can saturate and what you can't, um, and then going from there. That's a really vague answer, but one I'll stick with right now. Uh, when you're working on the snare, why do you do the phase flip? That was because it's going to cancel everything out. Um, and I'll, let me go back and talk about this real quick. So if I bypass these other two plugins, it's just phase flipped right now. So you're going to hear absolutely nothing because this is two identical snare tracks just being phase canceled. So if I get rid of this, now you just hear the snare twice as loud, right? Because there's another snare track on top of itself. So phase flipping it totally cancels it out. Don't hear anything. So now I introduce a compressor with uh, a crazy ridiculous ratio. It's just obliterating whatever it's going to detect, right? Attack is crazy, crazy fast. Release is where I thought was comfortable for the snare. And what you're going to end up with is the compressor pulling down the snare when it hits uh, based on my threshold. And it's not going to phase cancel those hits. So it's going to pop that snare out and then close right back down and be phase canceled. So the idea is this had a lot of bleed on it with a lot of hats because I did not record it very well. Um, so this is just my way of being able to use my snare without having to worry about how it was recorded. You can see it's just pulling down the snare on this track. If I bypass this compressor, it's essentially just phase canceled and we hear nothing. So what we're actually hearing is the fact that now when this compressor engages, it's no longer phase canceled. So essentially what's happening is it's a very, very smart snare gate and a very, very accurate gate because it's really hard to find a gate that can be this accurate and this fast. That's the thought there. And then to take it one step further, I'm just pulling out the bottom end because I don't want it to be crazy tight. I want some life in there and through that bottom end, we can keep kind of that thud. I can actually pull this up a little more. Yeah, that's fine for me. Now the benefit of all of that is now I can go back and actually do some work on this thing. Uh, yeah, you can see the fundamental here. Pretty cool. So see what happens. So now I can brighten the snare without worrying about also, like listen to the hi-hats in the background. Now let me mute the phase canceled version of this and watch what happens. Un unusable, unusable, right? I did not track the snare very well. <laughs> this was four years ago. Um, I'd like to think I'm doing better now, but benefit here, I can look back and see what old tricks, what, what I would have done before if I could fix it. So, uh, he's doing it to cancel out the bleed. Yes. Oh, sorry. I just went through all that and you guys already answered the question really well. My bad. Are you on your M1 Mac or the Mac Pro? I'm on the Mac Pro. M1 Mac is kind of my second computer that goes between here and home. Um, bummer is that I cracked that screen and so I have to get the M1 fixed. So I'm going through that. If uh, anybody knows where I can do that, that'd be dope. Let me know. I believe Bo Bichelle has a video on URM. It's on YouTube somewhere. What do you mean? Hello from Victoria. Hey. Welcome, look. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to get through the comments here. What were you ducking the snare? Yeah. 
you'll have to go. I'm not going to, I'll probably won't explain it again. Um, but yeah, you guys can, if you want to go back and watch this, or there's another video where I talk about the snare trick. Uh, it's a video. I think I called it what I uh, never use a snare sample again. Um, uh, Ask Jeremy is teaching current Jeremy lessons. That's very, very true. If someone has recorded something in a home studio, do you ever turn down a mixing product because of poor quality? I have. Um, it has to be pretty bad. I mean, there's definitely certain things you can do. It, it all comes down to what they want, right? I mean, I can impart my own taste on a project. I can impart my own my own musical tastes in, in a lot of this, but that's not my job. My job is to, if I'm hired to mix something, it's to make what the artist's vision was the best it could possibly be if I'm doing my job right, right? Um, so I think there's a lot that goes into that. Like if, if it's a, like an indie thing and it has a lot of noise in the background and that's part of the vibe, then then that's cool. This guy has no idea what he's doing. A dollar underwater. Ah, uh, you guys. Hey, go check out their new tune. Uh, yeah. Hey, I don't know if you can toss a link in, in the chat, but dude, go ahead and do it. <laughs> um, I actually got to work with those guys on their newest tune and they're really cool guys. That's a good example of somebody who recorded their own track and I mixed it and I, uh, we talked back and forth about ways to make the next one better. Um, but I thought the song was really, really cool and it was part of their vibe and was it perfect? No. Um, but I don't think any, anyone recording anything is really perfect. It's all about what, you know, there were certain aspects about that performance I wouldn't want changed anyway, but we talked through some certain things that maybe they could put into practice on the next one for whoever they decide to have mix one of their next songs. And that's a good example of the question you just asked. So <laughs> good timing, man. <laughs> uh, mix the song with a kick drum mic used to record vocals the other day. You mixed a song with a kick drum mic used to record vocals the other day. I I love like vocal mics on kick drums are actually pretty darn cool. I have one of my, the first nice mic I ever purchased was a MicTech CV4, which is a total sleeper. Um, when it comes to tube condenser mics, it's fantastic, but it's now I, I used that thing on vocals while I was starting out and I thought it was a dream. It really is really, really cool. Uh, I used it right up to the point I got the man lead cardioid and now the the mic tech is used on my kick out and it's my absolute favorite kick mic so yeah vocal mics on kick drums actually sound pretty cool most of the time <sighs> so why is it better than using a gate pro g is pretty nice it definitely is pretty nice let's see i mean this is just an easy way to do it that somebody taught me a long time ago uh, and I normally use it can in conjunction with other gates. But let's just take a look and see if I can do it. So let's just do this trick. So the issue I have, it's also letting that hi-hat through. Like it's not fast enough. Where am I at here? I mean, I, I might be able to tweak that and get it closer, but doing it this way. Uh, 
And remember, I'm pulling the low end out of this because I want that low end bleed back, which is kind of something impossible with Pro G, I, I think. I don't think you can do that with Pro G. I, mean, I can bring a dry signal back in, but I don't know if I could bring an EQ dry signal back in. And that's the important part of it to me. Program drums are live record. Oh, these are live. I would hope I wouldn't have that much hi-hat bleed on a program drum. Um, coming in late to the chat. Do you use multiband on anything? I show show an example. Sorry if you covered this already. Yeah, I I normally use it as like a surgical tool. I think I think it can be overused a little bit. What mic do you use for kick in? I think that was this one was probably a D twelve. Sounds like a D, yeah, D twelve, D one twelve. D112. I typically use a 91 now because the D112 just keeps breaking on me. Um, I fixed it like three or four times, but um man, how long have we been going here? <sighs> 32 minutes, and I haven't really made I said mixing a song, guys. I I love answering the questions, and if you guys are cool with the questions, that's totally fine with me. Um, I think as the channel grows and more people get in, like I'm gonna miss questions eventually I'm going to have to like stop looking at the chat window altogether. Um, I mean, I hope, I hope I don't have to do that, but I can definitely see how like stuff moving fast. I'm going to blow. I'm going to never see certain questions and I'm going to get off topic. Cause I just like to talk and you guys ask good questions. So sorry if you guys really want to see me mix a song and you're just here watching me answer questions, but I think that's important too. Uh, where did I leave off here? Tried posting a link, but I don't think it'll show up. Well, go check out the Dollar Underwater um, YouTube page. There's a link to one of their new songs, and they have some cool like behind-the-scenes videos, too, that are pretty dope. So if you guys aren't subscribed to them, go check them out. It's like cool uh, throwback era. Like, I don't, I don't want to say that like, a, like an insult. I love it. It's like very reminiscent of, uh, I don't know, early heavy music i think like it's kind of it's not really pop punk it's not really metal it's not i don't know how would you describe it man it's got it's cool it's a cool vibe for sure synthy poppy heavy you're not a loser bro that's up for debate uh i'm having a really hard time finishing my first album all self-made i feel like all the songs and promise to finish my mixes I feel like i'm working 10 hours a day and then trying to mix them um, I like the songs, but I'm having problems finishing my mixes. I just feel like working 10 hours a day and then trying to mix them. Yeah, if you're, if that's really hard. I mean, mixing is such a, a mental state thing, you know. It's, that's, that's tough. You have to carve out time and it's all about headspace. Like I've done some of my best mixing when I come to the studio fresh and telling myself like, I'm going to kill it today because I'm going to kill it today. <laughs> and you have to really have that mindset about it. Um, uh, are you doing the overheads right now? Just trying to see what I've missed so far. Honestly, dude, you haven't missed much. Uh, I got as far as the snare, and now we're just answering questions. <laughs> so get the intern to feed your questions. Uh, I don't have an intern right now. Uh, I haven't had one for a while. I'm not opposed to the idea. Um, I just haven't had somebody. My schedule's so weird with two kids. Um, it's unpredictable for me enough to start to engage somebody else. <laughs> so that's been tough. I have had really good interns in the past, though, and I love that what somebody can bring to it. Um, but we may have somebody kind of getting involved with the channel a little more, where things like this could kind of grow which would be a lot of fun, I think. Mixing your own music is way harder than mixing other bands. Absolutely. I don't like it. Not a fan. Let's get back to mixing, though. So...
Well, that's interesting. Huh. Even introducing Pro G on that channel made it sound worse. That's interesting. So, because I did that so tight, I'm going to bring back a little bit of life in there just with a little reverb. making me wonder if this uh, phase is fighting somewhere. I'm going to zoom in real close here and take a look. Is it with the 44? I am curious though, how good was I at phase four years ago? Everything looks pretty good. Oh, was that a floor tom hit? Yeah, sure was. Floor tom's a little backwards. It's all right, we can fix that. Where is... Oh, snare bottom's out. Look at that. Here we go. So I was not as disciplined. Hello, snare presence. Welcome back to the party. Okay, let's do the same thing with this floor tom. I'm just making sure phase is aligned here. Now we're in a good place. Oh, wow. Did I miss which dollar underwater album it was? Just their newest song. Uh, I haven't done all their stuff. It's just the dollar underwater, the newest one. Let me see what it is, actually. I don't want to say the wrong name for the song. I wonder if I can share a link in the chat, although I don't really want you guys running away in the middle of the live stream. Drown it all. The dollar underwater, drown it all. Check it out. Oh, you already said that. This is why I shouldn't be behind on the chat. Asking home producer, asking as a home producer, what can I do to make your life easier as a mix engineer? Like, what should have already been done by the time it hits your Dropbox cloud? Uh, like, it, I, I'm assuming you mean like from a home production standpoint. Like, if I were going to mix it, um, channel naming, name your channels, having things bounced out and consolidated, um, organization is huge. If I can take a look really, really quick and, and understand what's happening. Um, like this is my own project, so I wasn't as cool with naming. Like I would even like to see this a little differently. Um, but even something as simple as like, I'll, I'll, here, I'll show you. Um, so everything I would send, like if I'm going to, oh, okay, all this uh, up to here. So those are all the tracks that are in this song. So I would go to like batch rename and it could be as simple as this, um, adding a prefix, I don't want to replace anything. I don't want to trim anything. Just add a prefix. 
Oh, no, no, wait, numbering. Here we go. At the beginning, starting at one, increments of one. There. So, and that seems like such a little thing. Text. What? Anyway. What's the text? Um... Even little things like that, numbering these tracks are huge because when you go to consolidate this, like if I just have the drums here, um, yeah. So we'll select everything up to the beginning of the song and unable to create, oh yeah, because I'm on my archive. I can't do that. But <laughs> um, actually, let me just, I can change that real quick. Where is that? Yeah, whatever. So when you consolidate that, it's going to add that number to the actual track name itself. So when I then import it, it's going to import as I see it. it, it it's going to import as you see it in your session. So I will know like one, two, three, four, and I'm going to see it. And oftentimes that is enough to just clue me in on some of the things and some of the ways that it was tracked. Um, also like noting like chorus vocals, verse vocals, acoustic guitar, tambo, like just, it doesn't have to be named like crazy, but it helps. So naming an organization is probably the biggest thing you can do. So at this point... At this point, I want to see what this sounds like with my Neve engaged here. And this is just the MBP. This is my, my master bus compressor outboard here. And that clues me into all sorts of things happening. Okay, so let's go down. So I'm just going to go ahead and clean up some of these things real fast. Don't need all this insane low end. I haven't used these mics for overheads in a while, and I think I need to again. These are uh, Shep's MK21s. Oh, so good. Oh, check that out. I was on Apollo's. This was before I had the Burls. That's pretty cool. Interesting. So I'm using that to match my poor leveling of those, the room mics there. Same thing will have to happen here too. Four years ago, I was not as detail oriented as I am today, that's for sure.
Ah, that's a parallel. That's what I'm hearing. No, thank you. There we go. super cool why thank you that means a lot so i've just i'm going through and fixing problems and that's most of what we need to do my camera battery is gonna die let me show you guys pro tools for a second while i change the battery hopefully this won't stop the stream about that battery change in the middle of a live stream <laughs> there we go dude love watching the video recording everything with just a 57 that was that was my first video i ever did that was an interesting one for sure so what else do we have here So one thing I love doing is just getting this particular plugin. Sorry guys, a little housekeeping first. Get this to the drums. Where's the drums? Only draw back to really old sessions. So I am in love with this plugin here. Check this out. Uh, Joey Sturgis tones. Billy Decker drums. Oof. I love it so much. Hear it on snare. And seriously, this is one of those plugins that just works on like everything. Check it out on hats or uh, over overheads. Hmm. After a battery change, I am. Oh, oh, I see why. Boom, there you go. Change color temperature on me. 
I didn't just get jaundiced. My color temperature changed. That's better. <laughs> Good. Yeah, when I do these lives, I don't set up my normal lights. I'm just going off the lights above the desk so the color temperature is bound to change. Let's take a look at base. Now, if you guys have any questions along the way, please ask. A lot of this stuff was me pushing a lot of color and preamp distortion and compression onto tape before. Like you could see with this base, I was going through an API uh, into a TSL4, so this is probably compressed quite a bit from the beginning. Where's that low fundamental? It looks like this is the true fundamental here. I don't want to make sure. Let's go to a bridge. Okay, uh, so what, I, what I'm doing there is I'm just making sure like the low fundamental that I have that. I don't need anything else from the bass. Uh, too many undertones are just going to get in the way. I have a question. When you say you're tracking a five-piece band, do you track with a metronome? Or do you track everything multi-track? Also, do you record with quantize on or off? Um, quantize is off because mostly what we're doing is real tracks besides the keys. Um, those are MIDI as you can see here, um, and that's always off because to start off, yes, we're recording to a click. Um, that's really the only way that we can keep a frame of reference for everything. Um, and if we want to go off click, that's totally fine. We can do it, but for stuff like this, having a click is so beneficial. Like for these like quick sessions, like slam sessions, doing like seven, eight, nine songs. Um, there's things I can do later if the click was engaged, like flying around sections that work um, from different sections into different sections, if that makes sense. Like things you can't do without a click because those tempos would slightly change, right? But if the whole song is 87 and a half, <laughs> this is 87 and a half. Um, then I know like verse one is 87 and a half and verse four is 87 and a half and I can fly parts around and it's going to fit. If I move two bars from the beginning of the song, I can put it anywhere I want. If we're off click, I can't do that with vocals or otherwise. Um, so for like singer songwriter stuff with hired guns and you got to move quick. Um, I like having a click for that reason. I don't think a click is like. I don't see it as a necessary artistic decision, if that makes any sense. Um, hope that makes sense. So typically what I want out of a, the DI is the low end. So let's take a listen to the amp. Ooh, that is tasty though. Oh, that sounds good. That's just, that's a buttery, buttery bass tone right there. Wonder how much 1K I can get back out of it. Don't need the top top. That's kind of cool actually, I wonder.
different types of compressor choices with bass are actually interesting. Um, I love the CLA 76. Uh, I don't think this sounds like an 1176, but it doesn't matter. The plugin sounds awesome. Um, the, a lot of the stuff you would typically see is like using an LA 2 a Um, so let's try something like that, like an optical style. I think I have an LA 2 a Shows you how much I use it. LA3A, ooh, we're getting close. What is it, Teletronics? Here it is. It's actually nice and round. Yeah, I like the bloom that this one has compared to the, like if I just wanted something really controlled, this is cool. It's just gonna tuck it in there. I wonder what both of them on top of each other do. Yeah, that thing's annoying me. This this EQ looks disgusting, but <laughs> be interested to plug the DI back in just a little bit, just to give me some of that top end that I don't have. And at this point, I'll take a look at the bass bus. I like that. Get some compression on the drum bus here. You know, why not? Uh, not that one. I will say, somebody asked earlier if I use a lot of multi-band compression, this would be a place that it could be really, really cool. Um, two A, let's, let's try to find one here. Um, let's use Fab Filter, why not? Curious to see what their drum, set of the mix drum overheads, reveal the room. Punch it. Uh, it's excessive. Okay, so that's doing like a whole lot that I don't necessarily want it to do. So let's just play here. I don't want to have any more than four going on, I don't think. It was doing too much of this, like we can introduce some weird phase shifting. Yeah, 
I mean, for a heavier hitting song, I think this would be the right answer, but I... The benefit that you can get from a multiband is just being really surgical about certain choices and then being able to kind of like EQ it, like controlling the low end of that kick and then moving it in context. But I don't really need to get that involved with it so i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna pass on that right now i do think i'm gonna turn down and start balancing so i could tell my overheads are too because i'm listening to this very very quietly in the room by the way i don't know if i can There'd be no way for me to illustrate how loud this is. It's it's quieter than me talking like this. If that makes any sense. So what I'm what I'm listening for with it that quiet, my room is not responding to anything. I'm just hearing the signal coming out of the speaker so I can hear what hits me first. And it's the overheads. So I'm gonna start pulling back some of these things. Also hearing a weird frequency of the kick. That's just like spitty to me. I think that was just a bad mic decision for that hi-hat. I'm wondering if something like Soothe will help here. It's already a little better. Here we go. Oh, that feels so much better. Now, one thing I'm going to have to start addressing are the toms. And I want to put a, just a normal gate on the toms, probably. I can do the same thing with the snare. Um, it definitely works on just about any part of the kit. However, I'm going to go with this gate right here. Because I have loved playing with this thing. And I'm curious how it works in this context. Interesting. <laughs> okay. Make sure it gets it on a few other ones. That's that one too. There we go. So I can do this and I can go through a gate, but at this point I don't trust this gate enough. So I'm going to not be lazy and this is not going to be particularly interesting to watch. But this is where we just start cutting it up. So I'm going to start listening to just these toms here. That's a crash. Okay.
Looks like right there. Some no floor yet. So I'm just going through cutting everything out generally where I can see it like this, really zoomed out. And it's just gonna make the job easier once I actually zoom in. So you can see whatever mics I was using, the 421s, um, drummer may have had cymbals really close, may have been a poor mic position on my part. Um, either way, gotta take care of it. And I don't really trust a gate because the bleed is so powerful here. So I'm just gonna old fashioned cut this stuff up. I'm just highlighting, pressing B, Command M to mute. Because I don't wanna delete it, I still wanna see it. I like being able to see what's muted. Wonder if this. Nope, that is just a rack. Okay. You guys all knew mixing was glamorous, right? And this is definitely part of editing. Um, and this is an interesting discussion we can get into on what is, what's appropriate from a mixing standpoint. Like if somebody gives you tracks that are not edited, I will tend to edit them. Um, I don't really like to because I feel like when you get too heavy handed with something like that, you're, you're really changing the vision of what the project is. And that can be dangerous for sure okay uh, but in this case i think it's necessary so he's doing ride tom tom there we go take that to the next hit and i'm gonna do the same thing okay before the crash those are overheads. I mean, don't forget, yes, I am doing this to our close mics on the toms, but our overheads and rooms are also picking these things up. So it's not like I'm totally obliterating the sound of the toms. I just don't want to have that hyper focus on instruments that I don't need that hyper focus on. So I'm coming in here. I can see my snare. And I'm just going to cut that right before. Don't want to get rid of too much of that tail, so we'll see how that does. Again, same. That bleed's not necessarily as bad as the floor tom is. A floor tom, it just sounds gross to me. Like I don't, I don't like that sound of the bleed, so I'm gonna cut it. Let's see what this does. Sounds weird on its own, I know. Trust me for a second here. Is that it? Oh, we're so close. Boom, boom. Editing toms, editing toms. You and I like editing toms. If you're asking Jeremy, why do you sing to yourself when you edit? I do this all the time. Doesn't even matter if you're watching or not.
I gotta shake once I look up, see if anybody's still watching. This is riveting stuff, guys. Cool. Cool. Last one. Hey. So now what I'm going to do, do some batch fades. Need like 150 millisecond fade out. There we go. Okay. Now these toms compared to everything else seem pretty lifeless to me. That's I don't really use 421s much anymore for that reason. Um, they're just not my favorite Tom mic anymore, but that's okay. I have a cool, a trick that I like it to do. 73 of you stuck around to watch me edit those. You guys are champs. I got to say that. Oh, what in the heck am I looking for? Saturn. Let's do it. So there is like a... Liven up acoustic drums. This thing is gets you pretty darn close. Check this out. Let's just listen to the rack tom. I love it. Uh, and this first plugin on this other tom is just flipping the phase because I found earlier it was out of phase. So. And now they sound like they're part of the kit. So get rid of Saturn. Check this out. Now they have some attitude. So what's actually happening on this? Saturn is like a multi-band distortion. Um, and with toms, I don't really want to distort my low end. Maybe a little bit. And here you can see it's like on gentle saturation, a little bit. Um, here we're getting into like heavy saturation on the top. Oh, let me mute or uh, solo this track. Like, that's a lot of distortion there. I mean, we're really affecting like the EQ character of what's going on, but this is one thing I, I love this plugin for. And I've seen people do kind of the same thing with like NLS, which I think I have. Yeah. So let's see. So like Neve. Only only beef there is it's doing like the entire spectrum of the sound rather than getting surgical, which is kind of what I want. So let me turn that solo off. Yeah, like the low end is consistent and full and it's distorting that top end. So it just sits so well. So you guys can see here, um, and what time are we at? We're going on like an hour and 15 minutes. I'm probably not going to get to the whole song. Um, sitting here explaining takes a lot longer, but you can see I have some plugins going on here, but they're not crazy moves. Um, and all that to say, like, if the sound is good when it's going in, you don't need a whole lot of work. It's really just fixing problems. And yeah, we could see that I made some mistakes tracking it. Uh, this is an old session. This is, you know, I was still learning. I'm learning every day. But so once I fixed those problems, I fixed the uh, issues with phase that we were having. Like we got all the presence in the drums back. Uh, fixing some of these EQ issues, all of these drums came back. And now like the life and character of this natural drum is here. 
if I can get my bus to work. <laughs> there we go. Now, I did have somebody show me a trick. I don't want to say who it is or what it is, but I want to see if I can kind of... Oh, hello. I want to see if I can kind of do it here. Curious. So what did he tell me to do? I'm not going to name any names. If you're in the chat, you can bring it up if you want to, but I don't want to give away crazy secrets. No, wait, 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 wait. That's not right. That's not right. This is cool when it works. Just learn this. I need like an optical style. You know, let's go for an LA two way. Why not? I was just taught this, but interested to see if this is going to work out. Watch is telling me it's time to stand up. Yeah, it probably is. Oh, keep up. Let's see if this works. I kind of want to try a different compressor here, though. Such an interesting little trick. I love Bus Driver. It's a free plugin. I think it's still free. Bus Driver is go. Yes, it absolutely is. Um, and I used to use it on snare bottoms all the time because a lot of my sound and like indie records a few years ago came from that snare bottom, just like crazy crushing it with with Bus Driver. Because there's a lot of cool sounds there, like. and then using it in parallel with the dry. That's too big. Playing around with these different spaces is gonna be
interesting. It's instant vibe, and you get a lot more snare. But it's kind of doing the things that we really like out of a sample and what that does, giving us that presence, giving us the snap, giving us the rattle of the snare. And not only that, because it's not a sample, it's giving us like the resonant rattle of the rest of the kit if it hits that kick drum. Oh. This guy, this guy was good though. Like he's hitting, he's kind of ghost notes all over the place. So like... He's leaning into that snare. But still, I like having that sympathetic vibration from that bottom snare and really exacerbating it with that trick is, is pretty cool. And you can get as nasty or as tame as you want. That's pretty cool. See if there's any questions up here. Uh, how do you keep toms from being too wide? My floor tom is way out there. I don't know. I don't know. Is there a too wide? Um, <laughs> like I've got it. I've got it panned hard. But that's the thing, too, about panning uh, your tom. Like, I will typically go all the way left or right with something, um, knowing that those overheads are going to bring it back into the center, especially if everything's, like, phase coherent, right? And you're not fighting with other frequencies in different spots. But if everything's phase coherent, and even if you push your close mic way to the left and right, like you're only using two toms, rec tom, floor tom, boo-boo, it's going around your head. Because those overheads, or if you're using one overhead or whatever, it's going to bring it back towards the middle because, and I guess it depends how you set up your overheads. Um, I'm not, I'm using that kick and snare as the center of the overhead, if that makes sense. So it's really hard to demonstrate <laughs> without looking at a drum kit. But the just because of the nature of how I'm setting those overheads up, they they are not far left, far right. They're going to be a little bit in each overhead. So it's going to pull it back to its natural spot where that close mic is really just kind of pushing it ever so slightly further out. And most of my sound's not coming from the close mics. Like if I, if I get rid of everything that's not uh, a close mic. Now it's all the way on the left. When I bring back in my rooms and stuff. Definitely more in there. Um, so I don't know if that makes any sense or if that answered your question at all. But yeah, it can be distracting when it's like far left, far right. But on like a heavy hitting country record, it is cool to have that boom, boom, just left speaker, right speaker type of thing. And I, I, I enjoy that too. Uh Watching you edit while I do some video editing. Dope. Gonna hit the phase. Never mind. Thought it was a bleed. Looking forward to seeing what happens. Yeah, that bottom bottom snare. What are you gonna gate compressor your favorite? It's interesting. You guys know me well enough at this point. I love it. Question. I'm starting to research transformer preamps. Any suggestions on something to buy? Um, I would ask your what your budget is and what you're going to be using it for. Um, a lot of preamps will have transformers of some kind. So what did you do there? Duplicate the snare bottom and crush it and then sent it to a verb. Yeah, exactly. Um, just duplicating the snare bottom, basically making like a, a room out of the bottom snare essentially. So I have my normal bottom. And that was a SM81. Um, I believe that was an Acrylite um, because I know the drummer that played on this 
you probably would have played an Acrolyte. So I duplicated it, just obliterated it, compressed the snot out of it, pushed the input into it. I'm clipping, I'm sure. And I sent it to a verb. Now we could probably play with that pre-delay and get it to see how far of a room mic we want to be. Because if I crank the pre, it's going to sound like we're in a tunnel. Um, that's even far for me. I'm curious what no pre-delay sounds like. Pretty cool. And by the way, here's what I'm hearing without my bus compression. I'm going to click it off. Oh dear, what happened? There you are. The window closed. I thought the stream stopped. <laughs> so here's what's up. I can turn my master bus compression off and you guys can hear what that's doing. off turn it back on come on off back on Like at this point, it's hard for me to mix without hearing that. And it doesn't have to be an outboard compressor. You can have whatever whatever your flavor of compression you want it could be on your master. It's just hard for me to mix without that vibe that I'm going for. And it tells you so much about the mix. Like I could immediately hear the low end was off when we first started because I put that in there. Um, and I went right to the problem and fixed it. Um, and this isn't perfect. This is really slowing down because we're answering questions and stuff but i like this vibe we got going here answering questions like this but hour and a half i'm gonna have to cut this off but if you guys like this let me know um not related but any tips on taking a work tape and it's just an acoustic and vocal and producing it asking because i'm working on a song that's the same time signature and some other chord changes not sure I understand your question. Tips on taking a work tape that's just acoustic and vocal and producing it. Asking because I'm working on a song that's the same time signature. Are you talking about what I'm doing? I don't think I understand your question. Sorry, man. Uh, wow, that's your Neve Master Bus you showed in an earlier video. Yeah. That's the Neve um, on my compression or intro to compression, mi intro to mix bus compression video. You can check that out if you haven't seen it. Um, and this is this is a good situation where I'm not mastering, but I want to hear what this sounds like through a compressor. Um, as even at this point, I would probably start putting stuff on the master just to hear what it's doing. Um, but at this point, I have a good flavor for the kick. Uh, basically the drums and the bass where that's sitting. But I didn't get into like keys. Those would need some love. Acoustics. That's where I would go next. Maybe I'll see how quick I can get through acoustics. A lot of low end here. What do we use? 414, probably too close. Love this. Could watch all day. Do you do this every Wednesday? I don't do it as regularly as I want to, man. Um, I say man. Anybody. Yeah, I don't do it as regularly as I want to, but I, I really like these live versions. So 
I'm definitely going to try to do more of these. And if Wednesdays tend to work, I'll probably do Wednesdays as long as I don't have a session going on. So let's see. I typically like an 1176. Let's just play with it here. I'm looking over at my rack to see what's turned on. I'm curious. I want to hear the TSL-4 on this, but it's going to take a second to warm up because it is a tube compressor. And it doesn't look like it's plugged in. to try that compressor on acoustics for a while that's the tsl4 by inward connections uh, you say that 421 sounds lifeless on toms what would you put up instead i have um ksm 32s are fantastic on toms and that was my favorite I recently just got some DM20, the Earthworks DM20s, and I really like those. Um, as long as the toms are tuned well. Uh, I mean, 4, 421s, they're a classic sound, right? They sound good on toms. I don't think they sound good on these toms in this song, if that makes sense. Um, so if I was going back, I wouldn't use those on this song. So I don't want to seem like I hate 421s. I love 421s. It's not working here. Um, I would need, I would want something a little more modern for this, even though it kind of has that rock vibe. Like it kind of has, it's, this is reminding me of like filter, um, like, so like the old filter records, like the one that had take a picture on it. Um, I know that's not the exact vibe, but I just love those like crazy good drum sounds on that record. And that's where I'm wanting to point with it. That's my taste. And that could be wrong. Uh, someone came to me with just lyrics and chords, wanted to turn it into a fully produced song. What you're doing right now reminds me of that project. Basically, what's your mindset from producing a song from almost nothing? That honest, That's 90% of what I do. Um, I've literally made records, and I have her coming in for an interview. Um, or might do a Tiny Couch uh, interview with her as far as songwriting for the studio. Uh, not one of the records that I'm most proud of, but um, it was uh, yeah, it was probably six years ago when we did this thing, and we were going to talk about the songwriting project of it and how that worked. Like she literally gave me voice recordings from her iPhone singing lyrics. There was no instruments. I had to produce it from top to bottom, um, creating music around her vocal melodies uh and that was a lot of fun so yeah i definitely do that i do a lot of that that's most of what the studio is um questions rolling in finish writing it and complete arrangement before even considering production i don't know i could go either way with that like i think there's definitely something if you match up with a producer that giving that producer some room to work uh, is definitely beneficial. It's cool. I've been wanting to try Cascade Fatheads on overhead. A friend of mine was suggesting it. I love ribbons. Uh, I have not used the Fatheads, but I love ribbon mics, and I believe those are ribbons. Um, can't go wrong, man. I have the R88s. Um, they are awesome. I have two questions. Do you use or would you recommend using a template to record a band? What's your preference? Superior Drummer 3 or Acoustic Drums? They do different things for me. Um, 
I mean, I'm always going to start with acoustic drums just because that's how I work, but it doesn't mean it's correct. Um, Superior Drummer 3 is like, it's a, it's almost like a, a tool for me. Like when I can't get the sound I want, or if somebody's recorded drums somewhere else and I need to get a certain sound, I am going to use Superior Drummer either to detect and replace those acoustic drums or augment them. Um, Superior is something I reach for when there's a problem and I need it to sound like a natural drum kit, if that makes sense. And Superior Drummer is great for that. It does that like nothing else. Uh, you There are ways of like writing MIDI and all that stuff, but Superior Drummer like makes that so easy. Uh, and they sound fantastic. Um, so I don't think there's a preference because I don't see them as equal. Uh, and using templates to record bands, yeah, every time. Um, typically, I'll pull up whatever the last session was, start there, and then make any changes that I would need to. Um, even what I'm mixing on right now is a, is a uh, a routing template. There's no there's no plugins on it, but it's, all the routing is basically done. Or the majority of routing. I use Trigger 2 like that. Yeah, Trigger 2, it's definitely helpful. It's not as accurate as Superior Drummer, especially when you start to get into like ghost notes or tracking the velocity. Uh, Superior is way better at that. Um, and the, just the level of sample that they went through. And if you're, if you're using like a really, really detailed sample within Trigger 2, yeah, I mean, I guess it would be pretty much the same thing at that point. But there's just, there's a lot of, uh, Superior Drummer kind of feels like I'm working with a real drum kit rather than like going through a hard drive of samples, if that makes sense. That's just how I think. So I don't think either one's better than the other, just different. But now that that tube compressor is warmed up, that sounds pretty cool. <laughs> There's without it. There's with it. Without. That's pretty cool. I like that a lot. I'm curious if I pop a compressor on this guy. just playing with outboard gear at this point so i put an elop on the guitars i could actually just pull this over hey we're moving check us out so i'm messing with the guitars pretty cool go vlog style for a minute how's this look i'm interested in trying the fatso on the keys i don't these are moves i don't typically do but i want to try
So that was fun. So you can see I put, basically I'm only using outboard gear and that's actually sounding pretty good. The keys without that fatso sound lifeless and kind of boring. With it engaged, they just, man. Heard style millions of times over. Millions of times it's over. What do you mean, man? I mean, you've heard this style of music millions of times over? Name one style you haven't heard. Hey, the giant. That's always the first piano plug I ever bought. First piano plug I've never seen anyone use it anymore. I love it. I mean, for some things, like, it's a little bit too much. I go between the giant and I love the gentleman. Yeah, I know they're like a little outdated, but they just sound so cool. I'm curious what a different piano sound will sound like though. Gotta love those load times. So I duplicated it because I didn't want to lose what I'd done already, but I'm curious. It almost sounds too grandiose for me. I'm wondering about the gentleman. Yeah, I like, that's exactly what I was going for, like a Coldplay vibe. <laughs> Gives it like a Coldplay vibe. I love the, the gentleman for that. And again, that's that's where it kind of uh, gets into the weeds. But yeah, I definitely I think it feels more intimate. Like it changes the whole vibe, and it gets it out of the way of the other instruments too. Like the giant is giant, and it takes up a lot of mix space. Where this is very focused. This is very right down the middle. how loud we are. Sure, you're a good music. Make sure that the music. That's cool, man. It's not your bag. Gotta do what pays the bills, man. 
You're, I mean, we're definitely all allowed to have our taste in music. Is this something I would turn on and listen to for enjoyment? Probably not. Um, but that's fine. Like if we're, if you're going to hold out and not mix stuff because you're over it, um, it's going to be hard to find work, especially discounting other things just because you don't like it can kind of put you in a box big time. Um, I, I was definitely that way and struggled with that for a long time. Um, not wanting to listen to other versions of music because I didn't think it was good. Um, and again, whether or not it's my personal taste in music is irrelevant. I'm hired to do a job <laughs> and trying to do that job to the best of my ability and bring something like this into a spot where it, it can relate and give an emotional impact to an audience. Um, yeah. I mean, that's really all there is to say. It's when you're hired to do work, you do work, man. It is hard to debate how these players were dope. Uh, and I wish I could show you the rough version of this, but I'm fairly certain that thing is long gone. Let me double check. That would be way too interesting to show you the original. Let me go into the archive real fast. Uh, I don't have them. That's a bummer. Yeah, the original versions of these songs and then what uh, players like this did were very interesting. Um, I enjoy finding things in bands that I record I can get down with, even if the genre isn't necessarily my style. Absolutely. There's, there's almost any form of music that I wouldn't get into, I feel like. I struggle with that, with heavy metal. How do you get yourself to work on genres you don't like? I don't know. I mean, I there's genres that I wouldn't necessarily listen to, but I don't know that there's genres that I just don't like. And I mean that genuinely. Like, I've had this conversation with a few people. Um, I don't know. I genuinely don't know if there's, like, a, a form of music that I'm just, I hate, you know? <laughs> or that I won't listen to. Um, and being open to listening to anything really helps you get a feel for music in general and different mix moves that other genres are doing because, I mean, genre bending is awesome. Don't delete. I'm just being honest. I'm not going to delete you. No, I mean, you're opening up good discussion, man. You're cool. Yeah, as long as you're not a jerk in the chat, I'm not going to boot. I've only booted one person, so, because <laughs> he was being a jerk. Uh, yeah, anyway, lost my train of thought there. I think a lot can depend if the band is good and tight, regardless of the genre. Absolutely, like, good music is good music, and I think well, that's what originally got me into metal was realizing how good the musicians are and country for that matter. I think I went most of my life thinking I hated country and there's definitely still some country I'm not going to listen to, but like it is, it's hard to listen to the new Casey Musgraves record and be like, that is not a masterpiece, you know? Um, or even from the standpoint of just production and sounds, it's really hard to listen to a Nickelback record and say, that's not, that they didn't do good work. You know, would I go and listen to a Nickelback record for fun? Probably not. But finding those things that you can respect and finding things that like there, there, there's success in the market for a reason. And why, what is that reason? What are people latching onto? Is it an emotional thing? Is it the sonic thing? Or am I just working in a bubble so close that I didn't, I don't know. I just can't see outside of my own bubble. You know, I don't know. Yeah, that turned into a great conversation. I think uh, I think that'll be a good place to stop, actually. I know. Holy cow, two hours, you guys. Whoa. 
I love doing these. I love connecting with you guys on this level. This one, I wanted to try to focus on what I said I was going to do because I love looking at the chat. I love talking with you guys. You guys ask really, really good questions. Um, and I think this is the first chat that somebody's ever like super chatted me. I just learned what that was. Um, so it says chat revenue, $13. Like, thank you guys. Like, that's dope. Casey Musgraves is an excellent songwriter with a great voice. Absolutely. Like it's, it's hard to not look at records that you wouldn't, you don't like, you're not going to listen to. Taylor Swift is a good, good example for me. Uh, if you would ask me, do I like Taylor Swift? I'd probably say no, but it's really hard to, what is it? The 1989 record the thing is a masterpiece and it's a gold mine of, production tricks and mixing at like its highest level whether or not you like taylor swift right i mean go if you haven't gone and listened to that record or the casey musgraves record um or i don't know anybody shout out something in the chat but like things that like catch a really bad rap uh that are popular but people just want to crap on it because it's popular i don't know it's there, there's a lot there, you know, and whether or not you like an artist, you can appreciate production decisions and get, uh, get something from it. Uh, of course it's horses for courses. I don't know what that means. Do you think you could make a really good song off FL Studio Mobile? Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't like talking dolls. I'm sure. I mean, making a good song, if, if I have a good song, I can make it on any DAW, I would imagine. I don't, does the DAW does not matter to me at all. I just use Pro Tools because it's what I learned on. It's what I'm fast on. Uh, 1989 was my reference for a year. Yeah, same. It was so good. Uh, yeah. And I, again, I'm not going to, I'm like not jazzed about going to a Taylor Swift concert. I'm not going to go buy her t shirt, but that record was a masterpiece. And you'd be remiss if you didn't at least go give it a listen. So, well, I, was, I didn't expect we'd be like telling everybody to go listen to Nickelback and Taylor Swift at the end of this thing. <laughs> exactly. It's not the DAW. They're all good. Absolutely. Yeah. No, DAWs don't matter. Like, nobody makes a bad DAW, I don't think. It's just, it's your flavor. You know, what do you, what do you like? What do you know? I don't think it matters. But anyway, guys, two hours, that's I got to be like my longest one I've ever done. I'm sure somebody will be in the chat later, like putting a comment too long, bro. Yeah. Well, that's what these lives are for, like hanging out, connecting with you guys on different that I cannot do on like normal videos. Um, by the way, there's some really cool stuff coming down the line. I've been on, uh, talking to some other individuals who may be coming on board with the channel and we're talking about really like taking this thing to the next level as that's the most businessy thing I think I've ever said. Ooh, that felt gross coming out of my mouth, but, uh, um, dude, thank you. What you guys don't have to, I appreciate all of that. Like buying me coffee. That's dude. That's dope. I did not know that was a thing until like the other day too long i literally watch six hour streams all the time i do too i love watching long youtube videos uh, i think that's what this this type of platform is really really good for like i can sit here and talk I'm, i mean we're engineers i normally sit in a room all by myself and if this is the only form of human connection that i get in the week <laughs> i'm fine with you know i'm glad to have that at least um but yeah more people are coming on board with the channel um and it, 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 we've had some exciting discussions. I don't know exactly what's going to happen. Um, lots going on. <laughs> There's going to be some studio renovations. Uh, somebody else coming to help me on with videos, hopefully. Still in those discussions. But I think there's some cool stuff happening. So stay tuned for that. I'll read the last couple comments and then we'll just call it a, call it a day. Uh best piece of gear you own and why uh this would be my own personal answer but i don't think everybody should go out and buy it let me preface that i will say my burl converters i absolutely love them um 
Now, I don't think everybody needs to go out and buy burls. It doesn't make sense for everyone. Me personally, I think they're fantastic. Um, and if you are in the market for crazy high-end converters, that's a darn good choice. Um, do you prefer outboard or inbox processor? Not sure what that means. Oh, I'm wondering if you mean like outboard or in the box processing. Um, I don't have a preference either way. They're they're totally different. Um, I've said in multiple videos, like if if a piece, if I can find a plugin that does exactly what another piece does, I'm probably gonna end up using that plugin. Um, I love using my Neve outboard compressor for the mix bus, um, but I think the day that a plugin can match it and do it exactly, I'll probably get rid of it. Um, I'm not attached to outboard gear for the sake of it being outboard gear. I just like that it does different things than what I can do in the box. And there's definitely something to be said about hitting converters hard on the way back in. Um, did the water damage get fixed? Not yet, but that is a big play in the studio renovations that may be happening. I mean, I'm talking about expanding the size of the room by like a factor of three so that's gonna be exciting stick around for that i'm like i'm pumped about it <laughs> like i don't know if it's, i don't know exactly what's happening yet it's just literally just today the discussion started happening so that's gonna be exciting and you know i'm gonna put it on video so <laughs> uh do you mix rap music yeah i love dude i love good good rappers um I think I honestly I don't know the difference between rap and hip hop. I mean I I think I can hear it when but I don't know that I would be able to define it for you, but there are some really good local rappers around here who have like good thoughtful content and like anytime music is like that like you you could be a a country band and sing about nothing and it's not interesting and it's not emotionally impactful. Um, and rap and hip hop kind of catch a bad rap for that, uh, like not having anything emotional there. And that can, that's true with any artist in any genre, but man, I feel like there's really something special, especially with hip hop when it, when it, there's deep connective content there and it can connect on an emotional level. Like hip hop has like this powerful piece to it when all those stars connect um and i think back to guys like shad uh for stuff like that it's really cool uh, uh yes this is so good good great conversation great topics yeah dude you guys ask good questions do you mix in the box or console i do not have a console um i basically use uh, the converters and outboard pieces kind of like a console, I guess. But I mean, I don't, I don't run a console just because the footprint in my space is so small. Um, you can check check out my studio tour if you want to see exactly the rundown. I go pretty detailed on it, and it's pretty recent. So, uh, do you get a lot out of state clients, or is it mostly within your market? I get a lot of out of state stuff, uh, even out of country stuff. Um. In, People are flying in here in a couple weeks. What's the date? Yeah. I have people flying in from different parts of the country to do projects like every, every, every people are in every week. <laughs> they're in, they're out, they're in, they're out. Um, and it's very little of it is local. I definitely do local stuff to my area. Um, and I love being connected in that way. But my geographic location is not able to sustain this business. So, good question, though. Uh, rap is real. Hip hop is disposable pop. Okay. I like I like that. Yeah, I don't know how to design or how to define those two things. Uh, thanks from a beginning studio owner, man. Yeah, keep it going, dude. Do you use UAD? Uh, you saw me use some of the plugins here. I came from using Apollo's, Apollo interfaces. Uh, I'm now using Burl's. 
Um, so I did use UAD. I have one UAD satellite card that I can still use the plugins that I do have, but I try to get away from anything that like forces you into a certain platform. Um, that's not to say they don't make good plugins. They do make good plugins. I just don't want my hand forced for me, if that makes any sense. Um, and I think it's silly how they attach using their plugins to owning their hardware. It's 2021 that our processors are good enough. <laughs> like there's nothing special about UAD processing um, as opposed to what's in your computer or my computer. It doesn't matter. So I, I don't like that. How do you rate Apollo against the Burl? They're totally different. Totally different. I haven't, I will say I haven't used any of like the new, new, new versions. Um, but when I went from Apollo to Burl, uh, it was, that was the biggest game changer of my career personally. Now that's not sound is not for everybody. Okay. But for me, it was huge, man. I say, I want to get off and answer a few questions. You guys keep coming. I want to beat you. Do you recommend going to school for learning, recording or production or keep trying to learn on your own through YouTube? That's a hard one. I go, I go back and forth. I did not go to school for this. Um, I don't want to make anybody upset. Uh, and my opinion is just my opinion. So take it with a grain of salt. I would say no. I think it would be silly, especially, I mean, not, not knowing what school costs, right? If school, if you're going to pay 30, 40, $50,000 a year to learn this, don't do it. Please don't do it. Spend that 30, 40, $50,000 and buy this stuff and learn it. At least then you have an asset you can sell. Um, now, if you're also pairing that with like uh, other forms of education, like if it's a dual major with something else, like I can see that. I went to school for business. I also, I learned some of this stuff. I took some recording classes, but I didn't go to school for recording, right? Um, in that instance, I will say, I'm sure there are good students that come out of those programs. I've heard of really, really good students coming out of those programs, but I've also had interns that come out of like very well-known strictly audio programs that know I've, it's really sad like how much they paid versus how much knowledge they came out with. Um, and I, I understand totally from a student standpoint, like you get what you put in. So maybe the ones I've come in contact with just did not put in the work. Um, my inclination is to say no. If you need to go to school, like I love going to school. I wouldn't discount that for a minute. I met my wife there. I love how I developed as a person in college. Um, but yeah, uh, I wouldn't, I don't think I would go for audio. Holy moly. So many questions. Okay. Can you do a video of a tracking session? I had that on the list of things to do, but that's really, really hard given that I, it becomes like an intellectual property question and I could easily get a copyright strike from YouTube and I'm not trying to take my channel down. Now, we were in the talks with uh, some of the people who may be helping with the channel about partnering with bands who can't otherwise afford recording and what that would look like. I'm still figuring out if this even works and maybe somebody out there will know. Um if a band were to give me like a portion of songwriter ownership, if I become like a partner in songwriting and then I record that band for a very, very discounted rate and use that content for YouTube and for you guys to see basically in an educational standpoint, I think I could then get away with posting that stuff because I would be a partial owner. Uh, even if I wasn't able to monetize the video, I wouldn't get a copyright strike because I would be a partial copyright owner of that material. So that's in the works. We're figuring that out. So is your room treated? Yes. Uh, didn't go to school for recording. Had a friend go. He couldn't do what I do because of what I think is most important experience. Yeah, that's the other part of it. They come out with such you you just kind of press press the pause button on it. Like the most important thing in learning to record is getting in there and screwing up. <laughs> the earlier you can do that, the better. Took an audio class in a community college. Yeah, I mean that's the way to do like if you're going to a community college, yeah. I mean 
I imagine that wasn't crazy expensive. Um, and that might be the perfect way to go. But what I'm, what I'm talking about are the places that charge just insane amounts to go to, uh, to go to school and learn that. And that's where I'm like, you could buy gear and just start. And at least then if it doesn't work out, you can sell everything and, and basically get out for what you put into it. So anyway, guys, I think that's a good spot to end it. Thank you for everybody hanging out in the chat. Um, thank you for everybody who super chatted. That's so dope. <laughs> uh, anyway, guys, new videos coming down the line. Appreciate this talk. Or if you guys have ideas for the next live stream, what you'd like me to do, if you want me to go down this song again, I think there's a lot more that we can be doing here. If this is an interesting platform for you guys. So, uh, anyway, yeah, I know more questions are coming in. I'm just going to have to say stop. <laughs> Sorry guys. I'll answer more questions on the next one. Just be ready with them. All right. Take it easy guys. I'll